Well, howdy there. This is Scott Nicholson. Now, many of you don't know this, but I actually grew up in Oklahoma in a little town called Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, which is right about here on the map. Now, as a child, I grew up working out in the stables, baling hay and raising horses. My dad raced quarter horses, so I spent a lot of time out there on the track uh, watching the horses race, the ponies race, watching people bet their money, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. But uh, that's how I spent a lot of my weekends out there on the track. And uh, so now I'm here in the big city of Syracuse, New York, and now I look at games about horse racing. And so on this episode of Board Games with Scott, I'm going to look and compare four different games about horse racing. Hi there, this is Board Games with Scott. This is a show where I take some aspect of the board gaming hobby and explore it in some depth. On this episode, I'm going to be looking at horse racing games, four different horse racing games. And what I'm really going to be focusing on these games is the balance of strategy and tactics in the game design of the games. Now, uh, those terms, you probably have heard those terms a lot of times. I'm going to be using them in a very specific way in this episode, and I'll go ahead and define that now. So when I talk about one of these games having strategic decisions, the strategy of the game, those are decisions that you make before the race, the horse race begins. So it's in the planning that you're making before things start. The strategy you're setting up by playing cards or buying horses or doing different things, you're preparing your strategy. Tactics are going to refer to the decisions you make during the race itself. So in all these horse racing games, there is a pre-race period where you're getting ready and then a racing period where you're actually executing the race. And each game has a different balance of stuff you do before the race and stuff you do during the race. Now, the four games I'm going to talk about are Winner's Circle, Long Shot, Horse Fever, and Turf Master. And each one of them, I'm, I'm going to focus on that balance of the decisions made before the race, the strategic decisions, and the tactical decisions made during the race, and you'll see how each game designer has decided to balance these in different ways, and it has a different impact on the way the game plays out. So, why don't we get right into the simplest game, Winner Circle. Winner Circle is the lightest of the games I'm talking about here. It is light in strategy and light in tactics. Uh, the pre-race stuff that goes on is you're going to be placing bets on the different horses. Um, which of these shades of brown horses you'd like to have run? Okay, there's black and white and gray, but then there's four different shades of brown and green. Um, anyway, so what you're going to do is on your turn, you're going to play one of these betting chits that have numbers from zero to two on one of these spaces. Now in the basic game, you don't use the zero, but I recommend using the zero and the hidden rules where you put them face down so no one knows what you've put where. So if you put the zero down on something, it's a bit of a bluff. People may think you're going to support that horse, but in reality, you don't care. You're going to get paid out more for the place where you used your two than where you used your one. And you're going to get paid out less if other people joined you on the bet. So if there's a whole bunch of people that say, hey, that's a great idea. Let's all bet on that horse. Well, what's going to happen is the payout if that horse wins is going to be pretty low. So you're going to be placing your bets on the horses. And the information you have is on these cards. Now, what these cards show you are the number of spaces that the horse moves on a roll of the die. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll the die. And whatever comes up, you're going to pick a horse that hasn't yet moved and move it that many spaces. So on my turn, I'll roll the die, and I get a horse head, and I look and say, all right, well, of all the horse heads, I could move this guy three, or I could move this guy seven. Now, if I was someone that didn't bet on this particular horse, I wouldn't want to move the guy seven. What I want to move is, like, maybe this person just move him one. Because what goes on is you take that card off the board, and then the next player rolls, and they choose from the remaining cards and move them, et cetera. So your main choice here is if you bet on the horse, then you want to assign that horse a high number off the die roll. If you didn't bet on the horse, then you want to waste that horse's card by doing something like here, rolling the saddle and saying, well, I'll move that one only one space, as compared to rolling the helmet, which means you get to move that one 14 spaces. So that's your main tactical decision in the game, is after you roll the die, looking at the horses that still can move, choosing one and moving them ahead. After all the horses have moved once, you push all the cards down and you continue going, rolling the die and moving around. At the end of the race, you pay off bets and you do several rounds of that. So this has a little bit of strategy at the beginning where you're setting your bets and a little bit of tactics as the game goes on when you're making decisions. But in general, this is a really light horse racing game. <laughs> 
Now the next game I'm going to talk about is Long Shot, published by Z-Man Games about, by Chris Handy. I've actually done an entire episode of Board Games with Scott on this game. So if you want to learn more about this game, I'll point you to that episode. So in this game, you don't make any decisions ahead of time. It, the, the race is actually starting when you start the game. And the game is one long race, going around the board once. So in using my earlier definitions of strategy and tactics, this game would be purely tactical. But the reality is the decisions you're making early on in the race are more strategic, longer-term decisions because you could choose to spend your money to buy ownership of one of these many horses. And when you buy ownership of a horse, the horse is going to move more often on your turn. It's also going to pay out at the end if it comes in one of the top three places. And there's a cost. And so when you take possession of a horse, that horse has a chance of moving more frequently and also activates its special ability. But it could be that you don't end up buying any horses in the game, and all you do is bet. The other thing you can do in this game is as the race is going, you can bet on the horses. So it's a little unrealistic, you know, and they're off. Oh, wait, I want to buy that horse. Here, place my bets. <laughs> and while you're placing your bets, the horses are moving around the track. Now, this brown area here is the no more bets area, which means once you cross this line, the horse can't be bet upon anymore. So you can bet during the first three quarters. The other thing you're doing in the game quite a bit of is playing cards. This is um, really a, a, lot, a heavy card game. You're playing a lot of cards, a lot of tactical decisions. There's not a lot of moving decisions. You're moving straight ahead in your track. So really, your basic idea is the horses that you have placed bets on or own, you want to play cards to help them, and you want to not play cards that help anyone else. I feel this game's a little more involved than Winter Circle because there's a lot that's going on as the race is happening. You're having to make decisions about what's going to be useful for, as far as cards to play and where to best put your money throughout the race. So this game also then has a balance of strategy that you're doing in these early turns, like buying the horses and things like that, and tactics of trying to maneuver the horses that you spent uh, and get them as far as you can around the track. <laughs> So this next game is Horse Fever. Horse Fever is a fairly new game put out by Cranio Creations. It's an Italian game, and it's a very interesting artwork, a very different look and feel. You can see the exquisitely crafted horse miniatures. Aren't these lovely? It looks exactly like horses, as you, as you can see. Um, I can't even get the colors right. There we go. <laughs> so what's going on in the game? is this is a game that is very strategic. You make all of your decisions before the race begins, and then when you execute the race, you're just rolling these dice and moving horses accordingly until horses finish, and then you calculate who won. So there's no decisions you're making at all once that horse race begins, and instead, you're making all the decisions ahead of time. Now, there's a lot of parts to this game. This one is the most complex of all the games I'm talking about today. The horses are all going to be better or worse based upon this odds board, and so there are cards that will come into play that will impact the horse horses based upon the odds. So you know the horse with the worst odds it has the worst luck in this deck of cards, which is going to determine uh, some of the movement of the horses as well. So um, what will happen is as the, race goes, as the races go on, because you play a series of races, horses that perform better than expected move up on the chart. Horses that perform worse than expected move down on the chart. Now, you can choose to buy these horses, and there's a price based upon how low they are on the odds chart. And so once you buy a horse, that's going to be yours for the game, and you're going to get payouts whenever that horse comes in first, second, or third. But there's a lot of other stuff you can do. You can bet. There's a minimum bet based upon how well you're doing in the game, but you could bet all your money. This is a game where you can throw all your money down on a horse to win and cheer it on and, and win. Uh, so it does have some wild swings of luck that you can have in this game. But part of what you're doing in the game is you are buying these different cards, and different cards affect the game in different ways. There are cards that will affect specific horses, um, and you're going to play those face down, actually, before people get too far into the betting phase so that you can see there's a card that's going to affect that horse, uh, but you're not sure what that's going to be. Uh, there are cards you can do that will um, affect a horse for the whole race, that will in improve the horse's abilities for the race. There are end-of-game bonus point cards that you can buy, kind of like Princess of Florence, that affect your gameplay. There are people that you can bring into play, and these people are going to give you some effects that allow you to buy things more cheaply. Uh, so these people give you the metagame effects, if you would. So there's, it's interesting in that you can't do a whole lot of stuff. You can only buy a few of these cards each turn, and then you've got to make that work for you. So you find you either are spending your money buying horses and effects on the horses, or you're buying these weird cards and trying to play more of the game mechanics. But once that race starts, you don't do anything but watch it race. So you have to decide, do you like that idea? Do you like a game where you do everything push the button, say go, and watch as the horses go down the tracks. 
I do. This is my kind of game. I like strategic choices. I like making all these plans. And one thing I like about this game is you can't do everything because you get to buy so few of these cards as the game goes on. So you really have to decide each turn, gosh, what one aspect of the game am I going to interact with this turn of the game? The nice thing is that with most of these cards, when you're going to buy a type of card, you're going to get to pick four of the cards and pick the one that you want and keep it and then discard the rest. So you do get some decisions to make. You're not just stuck drawing off the top and that's your card buy for that turn. So there's a lot of clever things in this game. It is a bit of a ride because people can bet outrageous amounts of money on some horse to win and hope that it all works out. Uh, but I like horse fever a lot, but that's because I like strategic play. I like making the strategy, making the decisions, and then letting it play out. The final game I'm going to talk about is Turf Master. Now in Turf Master, I don't own it, so I'm going to show you a few pictures of it as I talk about it. It's purely a tactical game, and that's actually why I don't own it. I'm not very good at tactical games. I don't really enjoy them. I much prefer strategic games. So therefore, I don't have the game Turf Master. I've played it, but I don't own it. Now in Turf Master, you run the game over three races, and unlike these other games, in this game, you are a horse. It's like a car racing game or something like that. Your job is to get your horse to the finish line. The way you're going to do this is everyone has the same set of cards with numbers on them. And you're going to take 10 of those cards and you're going to use those cards for the first race. And then you're going to take your next 10 cards for the second race and your next 10 cards for the third race. So what happens is over the three races, everyone does get the same set of cards to work with. However, the distribution is going to change by the race. Now, everyone also has two extra cards left over. They can pick those up during one of the three races to give them a little bit of an extra boost. So that's one decision that you do have to make. Now, the way Turf Master works is it alternates between card playing rounds and dice rounds. On card playing rounds, everyone's going to play a card, flip it over, and move their horse that many spaces. The movement matters in the game, though, because you can block other people and you're limited by the sort of lane changes you can make. So that's very tactical in moving. And in fact, a really good thing to do is to try and make sure you block other people's movement because that can force them to waste a card that had a high number on it and they can't use all their spaces. That's actually the, a key tactic in this game is forcing other people into situations where they're going to have high numbered cards that they can't use because they're blocked. So there's going to be a card play phase and then a dice phase. And in the dice phase, one player rolls the, roll the dice and that player is going to decide if they're going to use a total of two dice or one die or the other die and all the horses move that speed. So what that does is that moves the pack along. Now you may say, well, what's that all about? Why does that matter? Well, where that comes into play is that the horses that are in the lead each turn of the game, the top three horses, are limited in the number of spaces they can move. So if I roll the dice and I roll a 12, I know the first three horses are not going to be able to move that full 12 spaces. And I'll choose, well, let's move 12, and then everyone, the, everyone in the pack is going to catch up. Uh, conversely, if I'm in the lead and I'm rolling the dice, I might say, well, I'm going to use just that uh, single die there. We're going to move that far. That's going to keep everyone moving slowly, and that's what you want to do when you're in the lead. So the game is tactical. It's about maneuvering. It's about spending your cards wisely. It's about keeping yourself open so that you can take advantage of situations and you don't get boxed in. But it is purely a tactical game. Uh, so the decisions made by the game designer in that kind of game said, well, we're not going to have any of this pre-set up. It's really going to be about the racing component. How are you racing your horse? So in conclusion, now you've seen four different horse racing games, and you've seen how game designers have chosen to balance strategy and tactics in each of those games. And by making those choices, they're going to appeal to different types of players. So for me, I don't like Turf Master because I don't like uh, games that are purely tactical. I like to make larger scale plans and carry them out. So you have to decide, do you like a game where you make lots of small decisions, that's a tactical game? Or do you want a game where people make larger decisions with greater impact and that's going to be more of a strategic game? Or do you want a balance between the two where you can make some decisions that have a large impact and then you have the ability to make some decisions along the way? People who want to be able to make changes along the way would hate a game like Horse Fever because you set everything up and then it goes in motion and one player runs the race and you just watch as it plays out. It actually, that feels like in uh, some of the casinos, they have horse racing games where you place all your bets and then you just watch as the horses move through and then you see if you made any money. So it's actually more realistic as to the way a horse race actually feels as a spectator. A tactical game allows you to be in the horse race as you would be if you were a jockey. You really aren't involved in too much of that front planning stuff. You really aren't, you aren't doing any of the bettings. You're not worried about that. Your job is to race that horse and get it to the finish, and that's what you're focused on. So it's about what kind of simulation you want to create. Do you want to create more of the simulation of the owner and the better, or do you want to create the simulation of the jockey or some balance between them? 
So if you have any interest in these, you can, you can get these, a lot of these games at funagain.com. Uh, Horse Fever, you actually have to import. Um, if you go to boardgamegeek.com and search on Horse Fever in the marketplace, you'll find there's a seller there from Estonia. And uh, he, you can use that interface. That's how I got my copy. And he'll be happy to ship you a copy of it uh, overseas. Uh, but if you like a strategic game, I'd, I'd suggest taking a look at it. So enough of me reliving my childhood. I've got to go strap on my cowboy boots, my shorts, and my 10-gallon hat and head down to muck out the stalls. I hope you all are going to have more fun than I will. So take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I didn't make one joke about my Pelly Ponies.